Hello? <laughs> Did I say that right? Hello? <laughs> what is the history of Bengal? Does it have something to do with the Chola dynasty? I think so. <laughs> Where did all that amazing food and culture come from? We're about to find out and please comment below if you love everything Bengali. In fact, why don't you comment your favorite thing that is Bengali? Let's do it. The Rajendra Chola won of I the Chola it. dynasty. I knew it. wanted to invade Bengal just for water in the Hooghly. And in that process, he humbled the rulers of Bengal so much that they didn't only give him water, but also ended up in a friendly relation. The people, the food, the architecture, and of course, the literature. West that, Bengal wow. has it all. But what is the is history of this amazing state? From Stone Age to TMC, West Bengal's history can never be considered in isolation. It always must include Bangladesh too. Stone Age tools dating back 20,000 years have been found in this state which has thrived between the banks of Ganga and Brahmaputra. And the remain of the Copper Age settlement dates back to 4,000 years old. The exact origin of the word Bangla is unknown, though it's believed to be derived from the Dravidian-speaking tribe Bang or Banga that settled in that area around 1000 BCE. The culture and ethnicity of Bengal was different than that of the Vedic people. Have on his head. They called Bengal as the shoes or demons. The Mahabharata mentions Bengali kings Chitrashina and Shamudrashina who were defeated by the Pandav king Bhima. The Bengal rulers have always paid attention to naval expansion. The trade links among Bengal, Java, Sumatra and Siam, which is now Thailand, can be traced even now. The Bengal prince Vijayasinghe conquered Lanka, modern day Sri Lanka, in 544 BC and coined the name Shinghala. There have been saying that the mighty Alexander the Great wow. withdrew from India after witnessing the mighty army of the Gangadhara Empire like who ruled the region That's which is fabulous. now called Bengal. Early Bengal region was divided into two kingdoms, Pushkarna and Samadats. In about 3rd century BC, Mayuras and Guptas established their rule in Bengal. The establishment of Gupta Empire marked the end of all small Maria, kingdoms Maria. that flourished in Bengal ruled hmm. by tribal chiefs. The main social groups dominating in Gupta Empire were the Nagashrishti, city representative of said class, which is bankers, Sartabaha, merchant class, and Kulik, artisan class. The Palas followed the Guptas and established a strong rule in the territory from about 800 AD till the 11th century. It was during oh, wow. Palas' rule that the region that is now Bengal reached new heights of art, culture and secularism. It was under their rule Buddhism started to develop in this dynasty. This era is known as the Golden Era of Bengal. Eastern Bengal was ruled by Chandra dynasty. However, later on, Rajendra Chola I of Chola dynasty defeated them and occupied this region. After Palas, the majority region of Bengal was under Sena dynasty from 1070. They hailed from South India and the history book referred Sena dynasty as the Kanara kings. In Kanada. contrast to Pala dynasty who championed Buddhism, the Sena dynasty were Hindu. They brought about a revival of Hinduism so and fast. Sanskrit literature in Eastern India. However, Sena dynasty lost the kingdom of Bengal to Sultan of Delhi in the beginning of 13th century. The thing that always astonishes me is that I've never heard of any of this. It's so bizarre how little is taught about Asian history in American schools. We know almost nothing. And maybe that's why I'm so interested by it nowadays, because everything I hear is completely new and exciting. Do you ever wish you could go back in time and see what it was like to live a hundred or a few hundred or a few thousand years ago? I totally do. I think that all the time. And if I had one shot at experiencing history, I think I would go back and witness the construction of Kailasa Temple because something crazy happened there and I don't know what it was, but yeah. I want to see how they built those temples in India. Yeah. Anyway, let's keep going. From here on, Bengal Sultanate era started. Tughlaq Sultanate ruled major region of present Bengal from 1338 to 1352, then Zai dynasty from 1352 to 1414. However, slowly wow. a Hindu ruler Rajaganesha started to spread his rule in the major region of Bengal. He faced immense threat from Muslim rulers. To stop that, he converted his son to Muslim, 
to get help from a holy Muslim man. Oh wow! But soon, Sai dynasty came back. After being a part of Delhi Sultanate, the region of Bengal came under Mughals. Production of items like muslin brought Bengal to limelight. Dutch, French, British influence all began in 17th century. Only when Bengal, due to its sea route and textile market, started to gain importance. That's amazing. However, think... under Mughals, there were huh. several independent Hindu states established in Bengal. That picture like was Maharaja really cool. Like Maharaja Pratap Aditya of Jasore, Raja Sitaram Ray of Burdwan, and the Kingdom of Bursad, which is Howrah. The British came to Bengal in 1690 as traders and extended their grip over the entire state in about 60 years. Maratha also made a failed attempt to conquer the complete Bengal, only capturing certain parts. Mughal rule, however, was gradually getting weak. It was exposed when British in Battle of Palasi in 1757 defeated them. After the Battle of Baksar, Bengal officially wow. became a part of British. East India Company then took over all the powers. Here, the actual colonization started. Calcutta was officially made the what capital flag is of that? India, 1772. Bengal Renaissance and Brahmo Shabaj, socio-cultural reform what flag was that? began in this phase. This made Bengal the face of progress, free thinking and culture in India. After the first independent struggle, Sipai Mutiny, in 1857, British crown took over the power from East India Company. In 1905, British partitioned Bengal on the lines of religion. After this, Bengal became strongly involved in freedom struggle with many strong leaders. In 1911, capital of India was shifted from Calcutta to Delhi. In 1947, when India gained independence, wow. Bengal was divided between India and Pakistan. The Hindu-dominated West Bengal was given to India and the Muslim-dominated East Bengal went with Pakistan. State witnessed one of the worst religious riots after independence. Mm. Marxist Naxalite movement destroyed much of the state's infrastructure, causing severe harm in the state's economy. In kind of jumped from the, the 1600s of to the 1900s. Over West Bengal, leading to that stability in the state. The economy of West Bengal further gathered peace after economic reforms were introduced in India in 1991. 35 years of CPIM rule came to an end when TNC won elections in 2011. The TNC was re-elected as the ruling party on May 19, 2016. West Bengal is India's fourth most populated and seventh largest city. Wow. West Bengal has seen two catastrophic famines in 1776 and 1942, and two partitions in 1905 and 1947 under the British Raj. Three migration in 1905, 1947 and 1971. Bengal still hasn't given up and tried to fight back and revolutionize their state as much as with art as with aggressive struggle for people. Wow. That's a lot. That was a lot of detail. Interesting. So from what I'm understanding, the British colonization of India started in Bengal. So that's Wow. I guess it's obviously because of the location and the trade. Bengal has seen a lot of really crazy, exciting, horrible things throughout history, mostly due to location again, and has that somewhat complicated history with West Bengal and Bangalore, which I never realized that there was a connection with uh, Bengal and Bangalore. Or not Bangalore. <laughs> obviously, there's a connection between those two, but I meant Bangladesh. Bengal and Bangladesh, but you know amazingly the food and the culture is still strong and distinctly Bengali So that is just something to be very happy about. Thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this and learned something and please comment below your favorite aspect of Bengali culture. I will see you next time. Jai Hind